Yo, what's good, man? Shout out to the people in the struggle. This hurricane tore up the southeast. Um, I know I was out of power for a few days. A lot of people still are out of power. So uh, prayers to those people. Uh, help out if ever you can, because a lot of this stuff isn't even getting the coverage that it should. Um, and I don't know. We got this. We have an election coming up. I had to remind myself. And all the smoke, Matt Barnes, who we know is a well-known Trump hater, and Mr. George Floyd himself, Stephen Jackson. Did we think anything else of this? Did we not know what this is going to be? And look, this is not me. This is not what you think it is. Because if it, if someone told me that you, Trump's doing an interview with Fox News, I wouldn't run home to go watch it either because I know it's going to be a biased take. It's not going to be objective. Objectivity is real. It's like that that debate. When How did you feel when you found out that the female uh, moderator was a sorority, a.k.a. sister? Did you think that was a real fair, objective debate? Come on now. Now, like I've said, and they've made me look like a genius this entire campaign because I've been stating everything step by step and I've been correct. I have not been wrong yet. And it's not because I'm a psychic or nothing. It's just it's the same old playbook that they always use. I said they were going to use black women to be the backbone of this campaign. I was right. And simps and gays were going to follow along. I was correct on that, too. And when she she was going to avoid all real media, which she has. She didn't even do the black uh, journalist uh, interview in Chicago. Trump came. She didn't. All of her interviews are going to be on the Chitlin circuit, the black media circuit. Ricky Smiley, Steve Harvey, who already said he's going to ask soft questions. D.L. Hughley. She'll do Breakfast Club soon. This is the start of her black media tour. This is what they're going to they're going to look you in the face and say, well, she does do interviews. You didn't see her on all the smoke. <laughs> like, really? That's real. That's real media, and this ain't got nothing to do with knocking podcast media. Yeah, we know it's a difference between old media and new media, but the objectivity matters. And I'm telling you, this was one of the most boring, dry interviews I've watched in a long time. I mean, this was, it usually is a content creator or just in that space, you're looking for something to go viral, a clip that can be edited out. There was nothing that viral about this interview. Not Nothing of any importance was said. She has such a bland, boring personality. And she doesn't help herself when she goes on these tangents. She never answers any questions straight up. You can ask her a question and halfway through her response, you forget what the damn question was. I mean, she just goes in. I mean, Matt asks her about her ethnicity. And I just felt, I kind of pity her because, I mean, obviously she... She uh, she represented herself as an Asian Indian woman in the past in California. Now she's a black woman. She's going on about how her Indian mother raised two black girls. It's exhausting to when somebody asks me what I am, I could say I'm black. When somebody asks what she is, she's got to go on this five minute rant. I'm like, damn, babe, you ain't exhausted. Just say what it is. So look, this is the one. Uh, I guess decent, somewhat clip from this interview where Matt Barnes asks her about that hear people kind of questioning just the fabric of who you are. Well, one, I don't listen to it. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm really clear about who I am, and if anybody else is not, they need to go through right. their That's own their level of therapy. That's not my That's issue. That's their issues, right. My mother was very clear. She was raising two black girls mm -hmm. to be two proud, proud black women. Mm -hmm. And that was never, it was never a question. Mm -hmm. You know, it's funny, because over the years, um, journalists, <laughs> some, not most, will want to talk about it. And I say, okay, if you want to have this conversation, I'm prepared to have it, but sit down and get comfortable for a few hours. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Cut it, because then she just goes on this rant about race in America. He asked her what her race was, the fabric of her identity, and she goes on a, a rant about racism in America and how her mother and father uh, were in civil rights activists. I'm like, girl, answer the damn question. Like this is, for people who are undecided, this is why. For people who don't understand why they're not jumping on this background, this back, this, 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 why they're not jumping on this. You're not doing any self, yourself any favors by doing all this tap dancing. Just answer the direct questions. We don't care about how you cook your greens, how you were raised. I was raised in a middle-class family. We've heard that like 12 times. Shut up. 
like they need to go back in in the the the, the green room and start like redoing something. Some of the talking points have gotten so it it's spot it's run spot run. It really is. <laughs> it is. It is like you watch one interview with her. It's no different than the interview with Oprah last week or whatever. It's the same damn easy questions and the same, you know, passive aggressive, uh, long tangent answers that just don't make any sense. Just a bunch of word salad. And I'm like, there's no way. Like I said, read the room. It was six. It was seven thousand and counting dislikes to only six hundred uh, six thousand likes. So you got more dislikes in the video than likes. And more people in the comments are flaming them than congratulating them. Like it was nothing said of any value in this interview. It was a big waste of time. And like I said, this is gonna be what they consider to be interviews for her campaign. And I'm like, this is not real media. This ain't real journalism. Now, the one question that Matt did give her, he asks her about the economy. Yeah, for people who are undecided on who to vote for, the economy has a big factor in the way they lean votes. People, the reason why bringing out rappers and stuff like that isn't working for all black folks this time because black people see how hot his gas is how hot daycare is living paycheck to paycheck car notes is, is crazy high car insurance people are struggling to feed their families out here so the typical shucking and jiving that y'all normally do to get votes and using celebrities it ain't working for all of us people that's in the trenches not the ones that's retired that done raised their kids the ones that's in the trenches you gonna have to come up to me with some more than just, oh, uh, my my family values. Shut the f up. Listen to this. The stresses that is also productive, right? Economy, small business, black business. We actually just started our business in January, so we're you know we we've grown from a show to a whole entire company. What is your kind of your economic That's plan wonderful. moving forward for people who are? living paycheck to paycheck yeah. and, and struggling for groceries and, and, and rent and, and homeowners. So look, I grew up, so my, my sister and I were raised by our mother. We lived for a long time on, in an apartment on top of a, a child care center. That child care center was actually owned by a woman who lived two doors down from us, Mrs. Shelton, who was by all of our accounts and feelings, our second mother. She helped raise us. And so she was a small business owner. So I'll start with the small business and congratulations on Thank what you, you guys have Thank done. You. I, from a child, knew who our small business owners are, right? I mean, you're-, you're Y'all, that, that's just, I, I had enough. Uh, just, she goes on another tangent about how she was raised, the family, the middle-class family. My, Kamala, you cannot use references from 40 years, she's 60 years old. So that middle-class family that she's claiming that raised her, you're talking about an America from what, 1966, 1970? We are far removed from that America. So please stop referring to your the way you were raised 50 years ago to what's going on outside now when daycare is $400, $500 a week. This is the stuff that the undecided voters are talking about. If you really want to talk turkey, you that's what you got to do to get people to vote that's undecided on the fence. But to me... She ain't won me over, you know what I mean? Maybe she's won you guys over. And she ain't said nothing of any importance that has won me over as a voter yet, black man or not. But um, like I say, this lady's interviews suck. They're boring. They're dry. I would rather kick myself in the nuts with a rubber hammer than to watch another Kamala Harris interview. She sucks. Let me know what y'all think in the comments. Maybe y'all had the uh, time to sit down and watch that boring shit. That shit was as boring as watching paint dry. Let me know what you think.